um, first say welcome for everyone for coming. Um, and I wanted to say, if you want to get a head start while we're introducing people, um, all, all the slides are at uh, bit.ly HC for Hunter College Open Data Week uh, 23. So I wanted to start by saying who we are. Um, I'm a computer science professor at Hunter College. Uh, my research is in um, building trees for biological data, and I'm very interested in working with large data sets. We include open data in um, a huge number of our courses from our intro course all the way up to senior level courses. And um, I team teach a data science course with Susan Stun, who's a tech and residence fellow. Um, and two of our TAs for the course, Jack Cruz, who's a computer science and math double major from the Honors College, um, and Christina Buena Camino, who's a computer science major also in the Honors College, um, are here to help facilitate um, tonight. And the way we're going to run this, since we know people come at very different speeds, is we're going to start with the very basics. But if you want to work ahead and have questions, do feel free to put them in chat. And we have, I'm going to do most of the talking, but we have uh, three moderators to help you move as far, as far forward through the what we're going to do tonight as possible. So what it would be great is to know, that's who we are, It'd be great to know what your interest is in open data in the chat while I get the slides up. So if you can put in chat why, why you're interested in open data or Python or just who you are, it'd be great to know who we're chatting with. Um, and the bit.ly link is in the, in the chat if you need it. And, and I, I think uh, seeing uh, urban and environmental planning, GIS, um, various people who already know a fair bit of data science. So I'm just going to give you a heads up that we really are going to start with the basics. So um, if you want to jump ahead, go ahead. Feel free to, to let us know or, or ask questions if you want. But I'm going to start with um, uh, the link that we just gave you and going to getting started with Python. And you'll see at the top a map of New York City. And if you scroll part way down, we're gonna start with turtles, okay? So if you've never thought about Python before, um, these little turtles are moving around the screen and um, you can actually run the, tr the code and see what they do. And I wanted, if you've seen this, go ahead. If this is brand new for you, stick with me. And um, let me show you what the code does. Um, and then we're gonna use code like this to actually work through open data. Um, so the first thing that this is doing is that we're setting up a turtle named Taylor. So you, if you can have this running on your own screen, it's mo much more fun than watching me. And our um, turtle is gonna be turtle shaped. And our turtle is going to have a certain color. What color is our turtle? Anyone in chat? I can run the code again. Um, purple, yes, it's purple because we're at Hunter and everything is purple at Hunter. Um, and what we're going to do with our turtle is a for loop. A for loop just means a, re a repeat some action. We're going to repeat three actions. Our actions is Taylor, our turtle moves forward 100 steps. And then Taylor stamps their feet and then Taylor turns left 60 degrees. And Taylor's gonna do this six times. And if you watch Taylor, Taylor actually makes a hexagon. Okay, so this is like the absolute simplest Python program. We do it for our intro courses. Again, many, many people have probably already seen this. Um, if you haven't though, um, now is a great time to take Taylor and have Taylor make a square instead of a hexagon. Okay, um, and then the next challenge is to make Tyler make an octagon. Yes, thank you for the turtles. <laughs> um, um, is to make an octagon that's blue and a decagon that's red, okay? And again, for those who've already, already know what a for loop is, do feel free to go onto the world maps. For those who haven't, can I get just a, a thumbs up if you would like to talk about how to make a, a square? Does anyone? Want to try making a square? We can go faster, we can go slower. So there, there are 75 people on this chat. So I assume that there's going to be some people who want to see it and some people. 90 degrees. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's change this to 90 degrees. Um, and I, I'm going to change turning left to 90 degrees. And I think we, what color did we say we wanted this to be? 
I don't remember. Blue. Okay. So the way we would change this is we go to the word purple and notice the purple is turning up in red. It's going to come up when we start dealing with open data. Um, anything that's in quotes is interpreted as a word instead of as a, a location where something is stored or as a function um, like square root or moving forward. So we can change this to blue. There's about um, 100 or so colors that our turtles know, um, pretty much anything you can name. Um, but there's something wrong with the turtle in that it's going uh, um, around the square more than once. How do we fix that? Uh, yeah, for I and range four. So let's go there. So yes, you can actually do various hex codes with the turtles. We're, not, we're only going to use the turtles as a, an introductory thing. For making maps with um, Python and Folium, you can use all the hex codes. So yeah, so let's change this. Instead of um, our turtle was doing six steps, we're not going to make our turtle do four steps. Okay. And you can do similar things to make octagons and um, also making a star is a bit harder, but I will leave that as a challenge. All of these are publicly available if you want to go um, try them later. Okay. So we're going to jump <laughs> from making uh, turtles to um, making maps. Okay. And so the first thing um, we want to do is to just say, we're going to represent latitude and longitude in terms of X and Y coordinates. Um, and so we are actually going to think about the red dot in the middle of our screen as um, the origin, okay? Um, any idea why that the origin is there? Anyone in chat? There's usually good answers here. Um, so um, this, this line here is the prime meridian. Um, yeah, so feel free to just answer whatever, when, um, yeah, so this is the prime meridian. Why is it going here versus anywhere else? It's our central reference point, definitely. It's where zero, zero is gonna be. Um, and uh, it's historic, right? It, the prime meridian um, was originally, yeah, it's Greenwich, it's the Greenwich, um, England and the UK um, goes through here. Why do we have the line, The why is the red line in the middle where it is? Or sorry, the, I guess the gray line. Uh, yeah, and the equator. Yeah, so this uh, excellent answer. So we have the GMT um, is our, our, our axis going this way and our equators are axis going that other way. So um, just to make things a little bit simpler when we're doing things, uh, we'll have our longitude, um, which is the number of degrees east or west of the prime meridian. It's gonna go from negative 80 to 180. And our longitude is going to go, which is the number of degrees north or south of the equator, is going to go from negative 90 to 90. Um, so using those, let's map New York City. Okay. And so where is New York City on this map? We already put it on there. But if you want to try on your own screen, map your favorite city. Okay. So uh, you can go into the little edit button. And right now... We have our turtle uh, for this one is named Teddy. Um, and Teddy is going to be circle shaped. And Teddy is going to be red. And I sent Teddy to negative 7441, which is what um, put a mark on New York City. So pick a city and send Teddy there. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to use latitude and longitude. And it's just much, much easier if people see it in terms of negatives and positives beforehand. Okay, how is everyone doing? Everyone's good? They keep going forward? Too fast, too slow? Can I get a thumbs up for just the right speed? Good, good speed, okay, great. Um, I'll keep going because I can talk faster. I, my students will tell you. Um, okay, so, so we have our turtles. So here's our challenges. Add a dot. Um, and if you want, you can make your dot turtle shape. You can make it whatever color you want. Um, I pick some of some cities I like. Um, I put Los Angeles, Paris, France, Tokyo, and Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So what you want to try to do on your map is add at least one of these cities. Okay. And we gave you the longitude, longitude and latitude in um, using negative and positives instead of north and south. Um, so going forward, um, what cities have people added to their map? Anyone see? LA. Okay, sure. Okay, so should we add LA? 
Um, Paris, excellent. Um, anyone add something not on my list? Uh, I'm seeing Paris. And, and again, the, the way you can do it is you can just add, uh, we're going to New York, I need to scroll down a little bit. And I'm having a little trouble scrolling with all these windows, but um, we sent him to New York and I can send Teddy to um, Los Angeles by saying Teddy dot go to, and then filling in the coordinates for Los Angeles. So let's try like a negative 100. Um, 30, which I don't think is quite Los Angeles, but we can see where our turtle ended up. Um, and we can keep altering it until he ends up in the right place. Okay, so that's our first one. Now let's go towards New York City, if everyone's good with this. I'm not seeing any complaints. So I'm going to go forward. Again, tell us if you want to slow down. And again, all the slides are available for later. Okay, the same idea works um, at a local scale that works um, at our global scale. So for example, Hunter College, which is where I'm sitting right now, is this purple dot in the middle of the screen. And it's at uh, longitude negative 73.964 and latitude 40.768. Okay, and we can look at the code for this also. They look very similar. Um, except I have to do a little bit of a trick um, when I do my go to moving my turtle, and then I have to scale the points to make them look right on the screen because of the, the way the maps curve and um, getting things into the small screen. So if you notice, there's a little bit of a, um, a hedge up here to make things work. We have a function which takes uh, the longitude and latitude that you give us, and we scale them to make them show up correctly on our map. Okay. So I'm going to go back and show you the screen. And now I'm going to have you try. Um, and in your map on your screen, um, send your Teddy, your turtle to the Empire State Building, Grand Central Terminal, the Apollo Theater, and Lincoln Center. Um, is the scaling specific to the Zoom level? Or not? Um, yes, actually it is. And it's also um, the distortion of this particular NASA image that I stole. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's some distortion. When we do this in Folium, um, which is the package we're going to use to make HTML scalable maps, it does the corrections for us. Um, but there's a little bit of corrections that we had to do to make it look pretty. Um, okay, so you want to get, and um, my apologies for people outside of Manhattan. I just chose um, uh, five landmarks in Manhattan so that they'd be easy to show on our map. But if you want to choose something outside of Manhattan, um, go for it. Uh, so what you want to do is add to the um, trinket, which is the package we're using up here, uh, dots for these four landmarks or any four landmarks that you want. Um, so, and then once you have at least two landmarks there, can you give me a thumbs up and we will go forward. Everyone doing okay? Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, so the, the scaling points was, um, it's a great question. Um, the scaling points was because um, the way this map flattened and um, the the dimensions of the trinket, the package I'm using, um, I had to actually play a little bit of a game to make everything fit nicely. Um, this is actually, um, turtles really aren't meant to draw accurate maps. And so um, if you're actually gonna draw accurate maps, uh, which we're gonna do in about five minutes, the packages we have for that actually do do the scaling that's needed. Um, yeah, but great question. Um, it is a little bit of a fudge factor, but using the turtles is a is an easy way to get started. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't have a better explanation other than that, <laughs> which is basically trinkets kind of distort and we needed to match the distortion. Uh, but you can just plug in the Latin long. Um, sure, yeah. So for this particular piece of code, it's actually very straightforward, but the other ones are more difficult and I'll show you as we go. Um, so, um, let me move this over just a tiny bit so I can, um, ah, it's not gonna let me do that. Uh, I'm gonna have to stop screen share and bring it back up. I'm sorry about that. I just lost the, 
Did you bring it back? Sorry. Uh, Zoom is not playing well. It's not yeah, only just a slice of it, it looks like. There we go. How's that? Much better. Yeah. Um, okay. So this was um, sending. Um, here was how we sent Teddy to Hunter. If we want to send Teddy to the Empire State Building, um, we don't need to change the color unless we want to, but we say Teddy dot go to, which is um, a way of moving the turtle to a certain point, scale points. Um, and then we give the coordinates, which I don't remember, so I'm gonna put question marks right there. Um, and then we uh, I should actually put something in there. Maybe I'll, I'll send Teddy, oh, I don't know where the Empire State Building is, but we'll send Teddy back to Hunter again. And then we can say uh, Teddy, dot stamp which means teddy stamps his feet oh okay i wasn't sure if you had to like just duplicate all of the code or just no just swap just out the those. Yeah, so let, me, let me grab the empire state building i can put this in here um so mine didn't work although i think i um i also did the, i added the scale again because i thought that oh was yeah, you do to need to scale to make it work you might be missing uh parentheses that was uh what i was ah. missing before uh -huh. um, and unfortunately, the, the error comments are not that great. Okay, so let me go up. And then if I run this, then this you should see. Oops. Might be big. That's kind of what happened to me. Yeah, I think we're going to have to scroll down and you don't get to see. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm having problems showing everything on my screen. But let me I'll pull this guy down. And I should have, there he is. Okay, if you scroll down, you can actually see them all. Okay. I see. So it could have worked. I guess. It might have worked and you might just need to have scrolled down. <laughs> um, OK, so so this is what we did with just random landmarks. But now let's use some open data since we're almost halfway through the workshop. I wanted to actually do this whole same same thing with open data. So um, hopefully everyone can um, see how we use latitude and longitude to move the dots there. So let's actually map the New York City Public Libraries. And so this is from NYC Open Data. And I just grabbed a screenshot of what it looks like. This um, first thing is the, the geom that's coming from one of the uh, data formats that people use. And uh, it's giving the points. Notice it's the same kind of points that we were dealing with before. Um, it gives the street name, um, or sorry, the name of the actual library, where it is, the address, which they call house num, um, and then the actual zip codes. Okay, so these are the first couple of libraries in there. And notice that what we can do is we can grab this, um, this point here, negative 73.95353, um, and the 40.8029, and use those for our coordinates, and that will send us to the 115th Street Library. So how would we do this just in our code? We can send Teddy to the, the coordinates that we just gave. So teddy.go to scale our points so it shows up and we'll end up with a library on 115th street as our dot. How's everyone? Good? Okay. I'm gonna move a little bit faster um, just cause I wanna get to my next slides, but um, let me say that you can do the exact same thing with um, with our turtles and send them to the 125th Street Library, the 53rd Street Library, the 58th, in the same way that we did with the coordinates for our landmarks. Um, but what's different than what we had before is we have everything in um, what this file format, which um, I'm showing it in an Excel spreadsheet, but it actually is um, a list of information separated by commas, and it's referred to as comma separated values. So we can actually use comma separated value files and go through and automatically um, add the points. And so I want to do that next. And we're going to use a fabulous package called pandas. Um, so let me just stop and say, are there any questions? Is everyone okay before we kind of jump to our next? Um, our next activity, I'm getting some th thumbs up. And again, we have moderators who are fabulous and they can answer your questions also. Um, okay, so let me go into the next one. 
I'm not seeing any questions. So um, let's go into structured data. And um, so I wanted to show you first, we have the slides if you want to do it um, on your own computer, if you have Python on your own computer, or you can instead, um, we have it actually set up in getting started with pandas in um, a, a collab notebook. So if I go back one slide, um, go back here and go back to our getting started and I can go back to our front page. Um, and you can go to getting started with our structured data. It will pop up um, with this kind of, it says GitHub gist at the beginning. And if you click open in Colab, it's the easiest way to do this. We also have directions for how to use it on your home computer. But if you use, um, we've basically packaged it all up and kind of hidden a lot of the um, kind of frustrating stuff behind it. So you can know that this is working. Um, if you go to this first box here, you'll see a little triangle and you click it. Um, it will give you a, um, are you okay if you run this? And say, yes, it's not dangerous. And it should print out the words, hello world. Okay. And this is the first program that almost everyone makes you write um, just to kind of test to make sure things work. So notice that we still have our words or um, uh, in quotes and they're read. Um, whatever we put in, in quotes is going to be interpreted as a string or a series of characters instead of a, a place to store things or a name for something. So we have our hello world. Okay. And what we're going to look at is parking tickets, everyone's favorite topic. Um, and uh, in case you want to do this and look at parking tickets for your own neighborhood, we've added the links for there's some useful tools to figure out what precinct you live in because parking tickets are actually reported by what precinct you're in, not by any other common measure. So you have to know what police precinct you're in, uh, which is listed as the violation precinct on the parking tickets. Um, Hunter College is in the 19th precinct, so you would use 19 if you are trying to filter the data um, just for the 19th precinct. Um, what you'll discover if you go to the open data links that we have here, um, there are tens of thousands of parking tickets every day um, issued, just an amazing number. So if you do wanna do this, you probably do wanna um, limit it to just your neighborhood. The other thing is there's an incredible amount of information in the parking tickets. In fact, you can um, trace, um, you, it actually has the actual um, license plate number. Um, as of, I think the parking tickets right now are, um, less than a week lag. So you can find out who got a ticket in front of your building last week, um, which is a little kind of amazing um, that you can pull this up and it's all on open data. Um, so this is a um, small version of the tickets. So let me grab it and I'm going to hit import pandas. So pandas is a set of um, a set of uh, functions, useful commands for dealing with um, data that looks like spreadsheets. So um, it stands for uh, Python analysis uh, of data, basically. I'm going to fudge a little bit there. Okay, and it, you should click the little run arrow. What that will do is it will load this um, into your computer. And we're bringing in the pandas commands. And then we took a small set of tickets and put them up for you instead of the whole set. And the next line says, take the tickets from this uniform record locator and store it in a variable called tickets. And so if I run tickets, you'll see what the tickets look like. Okay. Um, notice that there are, we just loaded in a thousand, so you can see what they look like. Um, there are 43 columns of information about tickets, just rather a large number of things that people keep track of. And we have the actual summons number, their plate ID, where they, uh, where the car is registered, whether it's um, a passenger car, um, commercial, or about 50 other kinds of license plates, including emergency medical, um, all kinds of things uh, that you can have. Uh, the violation code, you can go look up what they did. Um, and then a bunch of columns that are not so well defined, um, uh, 
uh, every every reporting officer seems to use a different word for colors and for types and things like that. So, so this actually has to be cleaned up a bit if you want to use it. But one thing we can we can actually do is count how many tickets people get. Um, and a lot of people, uh, you'll be surprised. There are some people who get more tickets than there are days in the in the that have been collected. So let's take a look at. Um, uh, when people get tickets, and my suggestion is try this on the on the collab. Do post questions because um, Susan and Jack and Christina are there to answer. Um, I'm just going to run through it because uh, I want to get through. Um, we're doing our parking tickets, and then I want to actually map some of them. So the tickets, I can look at individual columns. Um, these words in bold are the names of the columns, just like they are in an Excel spreadsheet. And you can actually take those and work with them and do various things. So we can just look at a single column by saying the name of our, we're going to call them data frames. You can think of them as just spreadsheets. And I can say, I'd like to see all the plate IDs. And so here's all the plate IDs in this 1,000 ticket sample. And then we can count how many times each person gets a ticket. So who got the most tickets in this data set? Yeah, <laughs> so this is a little old. This was from 2016. So um, I'm not sure this company is still around. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the it looks like Top Hat got a lot of tickets. And they got six tickets in, and this was like, I, if I remember, like a two or three day um, uh, list. But, and if you want to find out more about um, people obsessing over tickets, Streets Blog has done a great thing about who pays their tickets and who gets tickets. Um, and so in general, um, it's uh, who gets tickets. Um, Pretty much everyone, but mostly commercial vehicles get a lot more tickets than passenger. And then who doesn't pay their tickets are out of staters. That was basically what Street Squad came up with. Um, okay, so if you don't want to look at all um, all of the entries, and notice most people got one ticket, we can just look at the top 10. And the way we do that, and it's going to come up a little bit later, but it's kind of a Python approach to life. We're going to say, I want to see everything. Um, I want to see this list starting at zero, because that's how we start counting, up to, but not including the 10th ticket. And this is called a slice of the data. And so we're gonna, we can actually slice the data and just ask to see the top 10. And, um, oops, sorry, moved too fast. And we, we can also ask to see the last 10, um, which I can do by doing kind of a cute trick. So let me actually show this, because it is kind of a fun Python thing you can do. I can say, I wanna count from the other end. I wanna count, from negative 10 forward. And those will show me the last 10. So you can actually slice up the data frame and get different information. Um, like I can ask to see the first 100 tickets. And that will show me the first 100 tickets. Um, and I can tell that there's 100 there's just because of the length. Okay. All of this is kind of a warm up. Oh yeah. Oh, so here's the January tickets. Yeah, somebody was working ahead on the January tickets. Um, so. This is another set of tickets. We can go look at who's most common, what, um, who gets the most tickets. And so our question for you is, how many cars got more than a ticket a day? And what color of car is most likely to get a ticket? And are they passenger or commercial in which location? Um, so um, we can start on any of them. And we're not going to have time to do them all, but if you want to, um, we could actually look at, let's look at a uh, color of cars. Um, so this is kind of obvious to get the other ones. So uh, which column does color? I'm not seeing which one is color. Um, should be vehicle color. Right? Let me actually see if I can find it. So we can say, um, January tickets, did I call it Jan? Yeah, Jan tickets, um, Jan tickets. And then I'm gonna try, um, here's all the things I can plug in here. Should be vehicle color, vehicle color. So let's look at what colors they could. And I'm gonna do a value counts. 
which is going to tell me which colors occur most often. So just like I did before. So which which color car is most likely to get a ticket? Anyone? What do folks think? <laughs> Black Toyota with commercial flights. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. For this particular data set, it was white. Um, but it's just because there was a lot of white cars. If you actually go and look at who's being who's registration. Um, yeah. Most of the cars in this data set are uh, white, gray, or black. Um, so one of the uh, questions, uh, one of the puzzles uh, some students looked at was, if you have a red car, are you more likely to get a ticket? Um, and there's just very few red cars compared to everything else. So hard to know. Okay, so we can we can ask questions about uh, who gets tickets. You can look at who gets tickets on your block. Let's go actually build some maps with this. Okay, and so that's what we're doing next. Um, and so I want to look at making a map and I'm going to go over to mapping open data. And I have to reconnect this because I started this a little bit ago. Um, and so when you bring this up in um, open data, uh, or sorry, when you bring this up in Colab, you, um, the first time you run this, you're going to need, let me just jump down too far. Okay, let me go back up. Showing all of my pretty pictures. Okay, so we're using a library called Folium. Folium is a wrapper for um, JavaScript, Leaflet, JS. It makes really beautiful interactive maps. What happens is it takes your data and it creates an HTML file, and then you can use the HTML file in a browser. Um, you do need to install the Folium package. It's not default inside Colab. So the first thing you're going to have to do is um, this, click this first button to run it. Um, which is a little bit annoying and it's going to kind of time out for a while, um, but I'll do it just so we have it. And you'll see it going through all the uh, pieces that it needs to get fully and running. Okay. Once you do that, you can start making really beautiful maps without having to do the little fudges with scaling. Okay. So the first thing you do is you say import fully. And what that tells Python is, is that I want to use all the functions and nice things that the, Foli the people who wrote Folium created for me. So you should be able to say portfolio. And then you can say, I want to set up a map. And the map um, we're going to set up is, I'm going to call it world map because it's the whole world. And the, we set it up with a location. We're centering it at zero, zero. And we have a zoom start of two. And if I want to display the map, um, this is what it looks like. Okay. What happens if I change this to a zoom start of six, any ideas? So best thing to do is try it on your machine um, and see what happens. And so the first one, I um, I rebuilt this object, I reinstantiated this object, and then if I click it again, what changed? Everyone see it? Um, yeah, it zoomed in, okay. Um, if I change it to three, I'll be back out in, uh, well, again, so we create the object and then we resume and notice I'm I'm back out. I'm still centered at zero, zero, um, but I can zoom in or out um, as far as I want and we'll adjust the tiles. Okay, so this is really, really lovely uh, to do stuff. So now we can go on to our next part, which is actually let's build a map of New York City. That's why we're here. Um, and so let's set up our object, but this time let's set it up starting in New York City. So notice that our we have map NYC. We're saying folium. I want to create a map. I want to go from uh, centering it at 40.75 and negative 74.125. I have my zoom start be really close in at 10. Okay, so I created or instantiated my object. And now if I go down, down, okay. Uh, I'm going to add a marker just to make this a little more interesting to my map. Um, and my marker is going to be a pin in the map that is um, set it with a, the name Hunter College uh, at our address. And um, I'm gonna add that to my map. So I click that and you can add other markers to your map just like we did before. And when I display my map, this is what it looks like. And notice this is actually scalable. So you can do everything you could with an HTML map. And um, this is using um, OpenStreetMap to, in the background. Okay, so maybe you don't particularly like their their default, but we will we will fix that. Okay, so let's go down. 
Next one. Okay. So let's actually plot from files because that's why we're here. We're here to actually plot open data. So we can combine um, what we know from open data with a map like this. And so the first one, um, you can do it with the libraries, but let's do it with Wi-Fi locations across the city. And so the first thing we can do is set up the Wi-Fi locations. We're gonna use pandas. Again, pandas is a way to store data um, in a spreadsheet. And it's gonna read in a common separated file, which is just a copy of the Wi-Fi locations uh, pared down a tiny bit. And um, the last thing we do here is some of the Wi-Fi locations in the open data have some empty entries that um, are hard to map. So we're gonna actually um, hide those a little bit um, by dropping them. So we don't have to worry. If we don't have their um, other information, it's gonna be hard to map something about them. Okay. And here's what they look like. Here's all the Wi-Fi information, their locations, uh, IDs, X's and Y's. Okay. And um, if you wanna use a different name for your file, you just need to change what goes in read CSV. Okay. So let's actually play with this a little bit. Let's make a map still centered in New York City, um, but let's change what it looks like. So the, we used the default map before, and let's change it to um, some of the other uh, maps built into Folium. And so this one is called Stamen Toner. Let me hit enter and then go down one. Um, and here's what Stamen Toner looks like for a map. A um, little different. Okay, so let's try um, some of the other maps we can do besides Stamen Toner, uh, which is one that uh, sometimes people like, sometimes don't. So uh, we made a list of some of the more common ones. Um, so if we change this to, for example, um, map box right. And oops, should I spell it right? No, oh, maybe let me try. Oops, I, this is not working for me. Let me go back to student toner. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm spelling wrong with map box. Right, um, and then let me see if I change this to terrain, if that one's gonna work for me. And let's do this with, yeah. And so notice you can change the map background. And again, there's something wrong I wrote wrong with map, map box, I'm not sure what I did wrong. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. So notice this one is actually doing um, uh, topo maps, which isn't quite as useful in New York City, but you could actually zoom in and see the change in elevations. Okay, so those are our different maps. How can we put open data on this? I'm trying to get to this before we run out of time because we're going to run out of time fairly soon. Um, we can actually take our data frame, which was called Wi-Fi, and we can grab its latitude, its longitude, and its location, and we can loop through them. There's many, many ways to do this. I'm going to use a for loop just because it's um, the easiest. For those who know pandas, you can argue that we should probably do a different way, but this is because we started with four loops at the beginning, we're gonna use them here. And for every lat, long, and name, we're gonna set up a new marker at lat and long with the pop-up of name, and we're gonna add it to our map. And so when we run this, we're gonna end up with our map down below. And, um, and notice my map changed because I changed the background um, to be, oh, I should add my markers. Let me add my markers in. So I needed to add my markers because I changed my map. And then let's show my map, which is now a terrain map instead of a map. And you can see all of these locations. If I hover and click on them, I can actually get um, the names that are provided in the web. So this is a really, really super easy way to include uh, scalable maps in your um, in web pages you build. We can zoom in and look at different regions. Okay, and um, you can do similar things. Okay, and I'm about to run out of time, but let's let's actually let me see how much I can get through. Um, you can do similar things with three one one data. So um, just like parking tickets, all the calls uh, recorded by the city um, to the three one one lines are are stored, um, and they keep all kinds of interesting information: um, what the complaint type was, where it was. Um, what the agency that it was uh, sent to to address the problem, uh, how long it took them to address it, and things like that. And so um, 
this particular data set, uh, for some reason, there was some neighborhoods in Queens that uh, didn't give latitude and longitude. Um, and not all, but there's, a, yeah, so we dropped them. And so we're going to set up um, a data frame called 311, which we're going to read this in. And this is our data frame. And if you want to use this and read in um, CSVs for your local neighborhood, you definitely can. You can just take this collab file, copy it, and change it to, to work with others. And so you can see all the different challenges. And so what I wanted to um, end today with was letting people try to make a map with 311. It's fun. Um, make your own HTML map, add in your own markers and display your map. And then we also included here the collision data. Um, so this is um, uh, every time um, a um, officer is reported to the scene and recorded a collision between two cars or two vehicles of any sort, um, it's actually uh, collated and sent uh, to open data. And so Again, we're doing the similar thing as if um, the latitude and longitude weren't recorded, which is true on some of the older data, um, we're dropping it because we can't actually map it with that. And this was actually all of the um, collisions that occurred on Thomas Hunter's birthday in um, 2016. We literally just collected um, all, of his, all of those collisions and then we can actually map those. And I can show you what it looks like down um, okay, so we actually have to uh, uh, build them. Um, we can also do the same with Wi-Fi. Okay, so we left lots of different ones for you to look look at. Um, and let me come back down to our challenges of um, just saying um, we're here to help. Though so we just give you all the basic tools to make maps, and um, feel free to ask us questions and. Again, we, we're going to have to leave at a few minutes before six, but I want to make sure we can get there. So if anyone has questions, um, otherwise we're happy to talk you through how to make an HTML map for 311. Susan. Um, quick question in the chat. Um, yeah. Are we going to post the solutions for some of the challenges listed here? Are we going to post the solutions? Um, yeah, almost all the solutions are there. Um, but yes, we can post them. If there's a certain one you want to see, I'm happy to I'm happy to post them. Um, and then um, just before going on, if you like what you see, um, come join us at Hunter College. We have um, our introductory course uses open data all the way through it. And um, we love having people from the community come and uh, come join us. Yeah. There's still some questions kind of going oh, through okay. the chat. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Questions am I? Um, let's see. Uh, if you're interested in learning Python, um, yeah, there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I said we teach Python in our um, Introduction to Computer Science course. You're welcome to come join us. All of the materials are available online and public. Um, if you want to try, um, Susan, do you have a good suggestion for Python review? I do like the educative courses. They have a okay. free Python course in educative. Okay, so the Python. Um, good. And I don't actually have the link in front of me, but I can look for it. Oh yes, and then we also, we, we do do a full data science course, which is what all, all four of us work on. Um, which is a much more intense course and it assumes you've had a year of programming and a semester of statistics. Um, and we have a great time. Yeah, and yeah, come join us. We're, we're teaching it um, in the fall. We teach the course. It's gonna be, so Jack and, and Christina will have graduated, but Susan and I will be back um, in the fall, 11.30 to 2.30 on Wednesdays. Um, and um, you are, Welcome to enroll as a community member.